guys, it's Callista, and I'm super excited today because I get to share with you guys uh, a video concept that took a little while to pull together, which is how to take a rally, top tips from Lord's mobile player. So I basically went to some of the guys and gals that I think are amazing at this game and basically told them if somebody's going to take a rally, what are the top things you think they need to know? So this is for guys and players that are kind of in a weird range, right? Like you have way too many troops to hide, but not enough where you feel like, oh yeah, piece of cake, I can take this rally without a problem. And I'm thinking, you know, if you're like 500 million might, you may not be as concerned as somebody who's, let's say, 200 million might, right? And you have, let's say, three to four million troops, right? You have to be really, really careful about taking that rally uh, and making sure that you're kind of taking the necessary steps to keep yourself protected. So without further ado, we're going to get started. I have 10 players that submitted tips and I'm going to credit all of them because they were fantastic. The first one comes from Tex Joker, who is part of DJ Dirty Joker's huge shout out. I was part of that guild. They are a fantastic group of guys. His feedback was port as far away as possible from the person sending you the rally and have your guildmates that will reinforce you Port all around you. Why? Super simple answer. Think about that. You're going to get rallied. The guy's probably going to port right next to you. The first thing that you do is figure out where can you go that is farthest from that person. The reason that you're going to do that, and you can do that in the very beginning, you can do that at the very end. You're going to see some of the other tips will tell you to do it as early as possible if you plan on actually taking the rally. So you're going to port really far away. And the reason that you're going to do that is once the rally starts marching, they're going to need to use carpets to be able to get to you. And carpets are super expensive. Even some of the really Really big guilds that spend a ton of cash in this game are hard up for carpets, right? Like, I can't even tell you how much they cost right now, but they, you know, you'll get one or two in a pack. And even if you're getting, you know, a hundred dollar pack, you don't get like 200 or 20 carpets. Uh, so they're super valuable, right? So uh, in order for them to get to you in a reasonable amount of time, they're going to need to carpet. They can't use their uh, troop speeds or their wing boots or any of that stuff. None of that stuff is going to help. They have to use the carpet. So you want to make it hella expensive for them to get to you. And that is going to also give you time to see what they're sending you. And some of the other guys um, that I spoke to are going to bring that up as potential things to think about, but that is a really, really solid tip. The next tip that we have coming up comes from Bears from R5D, and that is check the rallier's gear. If you see a specific type of troop being boosted by the gear, assume he will send that type of troop in a flanks or wedge formation, right? So make sure you take a look at who's scouting you. Uh, and then, you know, you should be pretty familiar, I think, at this point. If you're about to get rallied, you're probably a bigger player uh, where you can quickly kind of check to see uh, what boost that specific gear gives. And it's very, very likely that that specific player is also geared to have his attack boosts hitting those same types of troops. So he might be, if you see a lot of, let's say, B gear on him, um, you can assume that it's going to be cavalry slash range that he's going to come at you with. It might be one or the other. It might be a combination of both. And he's probably going to run one of those in either a ranged or flanks formation. So keep that in mind, and that can help you set up your defenses appropriately. Another tip. From the Gecko A to Z, huge shout out to Gecko. He has his own channel. I'm going to include his link uh, below. Awesome channel, great YouTuber, highly recommend. His feedback is make sure your guildmates reinforce you with the right type of troop. Understand what troop types you're going to need. And for that, you need to understand what troop types you're boosting. And by troop types, I'm talking about is it ranged? Is it infantry? Is it cavalry? Uh, so you are probably already boosting specific troop types. Uh, and if you have all your gear set up this way, your gems, your talents, then you probably want to make sure that you are requesting those specific troop types of the folks that are reinforcing you. So keep that in mind. Super important. 
Up next, this tip comes to us from Zahuli6 from my very own BRR Blood Red Rose. If you don't think you'll be able to determine what composition you're being sent, reset your talents. Put on your battle gear and then choose talents that even out your attack percentages so you do not have a weak point. This is pretty interesting. And if you are in a position where, depending on where you are, kind of progressing your character. So the last tip is really for players that have been very specific about, you know, boosting specific troop types. But if you have been primarily mixed, you want to make sure that you stay mixed, right? So um, that advice is really good. You're basically going to take a big step back, reset your talents, equip your battle gear, and then make sure that as you're equipping your talents, you're keeping yourself completely even across what those attack boosts will look like. Uh, the reason for that is you want to make sure that if you have no idea what is going to be sent to you, that you do not have a weak point. So let's say you're not, you don't have extremely weak infantry, right? Uh, so in order to make sure that you don't have an extremely weak infantry, you do need to do kind of that reset exercise. And that is going to make sure that you are truly mixed. That if you say you're, you know, I'm equal across all, that you are actually equal across all, which is quite important. Okay, so this tip comes to us from UK180 from HH, HAH, which I believe stands for Happy Hookers. <laughs> um, so they win for funniest guild name for sure. Um, so shout out to those guys. I know quite a few guys in there. So hello. Uh, make sure you have resources out and handy. Oh my God, this is so important, guys. Uh, when you're going to eat a rally, let's say the rally hits, you want to make sure that you already have your wood, your stone, your food, kind of open and ready to go to heal. And the reason for that is it is common practice for people, especially the bigger guilds, be careful with this stuff, right? Because like the techniques and tactics get a little bit more advanced, but you kind of send a rally and immediately you start to see some of the big guys start porting all around you because they plan on soloing you, especially if you're in that kind of like 100 to 200 million range. After a rally, you are going to be significantly weakened. They are probably going to fill your hospitals depending on what your hospital capacity looks like. So you want to make sure that as soon as the rally hits, you have all your resources open, ready to go, boom, boom, boom. You are emptying your hospitals very quickly and you are ready. And you're going to surprise them if they then start, you know, marching their little troops over to your castle that you still have hospital capacity. And in order to be able to do that, you need to have your packs opened. The worst feeling is for you to need to do that really quickly and you're starting to stack and you have to start from the bottom up, right? Because you might have like 5,000 wood, 7,000 wood, 10,000 wood from, you know, uh, quests and things like that. So you want to make sure you're heavying up on some of those things. So healing is super duper quick. All right. So use anti-scout at all times. This will help ensure they do not know how to counter you. Wait until the last, last possible moment to switch into a boost and then immediately put anti-scout back once the rally has already hit. This is from Azteca Loco, uh, from WIB. Uh, shout out to him. This is a great, great tip, right? So the power of anti-scout. You should have anti-scout on at all times. It is so important. Uh, consider yourself to be like 25% defeated if they got a good scout on you because they're going to know exactly what you have in your castle and how to counter you. So when you're being rallied, you have to, hopefully you had your anti-scout on, right? That's kind of what this tip is geared towards. You, you hopefully knew how important it is. You have it on. Don't immediately get rallied and you're, you see the counter and it's five minutes and start popping your boosts or anything like that. Don't do that. Um, if you have had your anti-scout on, yay, and you want to keep it on until the last possible moment. Now, this is going to be one of those things where you're like, you're kind of playing chicken because you also should be aware that they will, you know, if they have carpets or whatever, they might try to, to hit you pretty quickly from a rally perspective. So you need to time it. Uh, but I would say try to time it to as close as possible to the rally hitting you as you can. Put on a boost, and then as soon as the rally hits you and they're walking away, boom, pop it off and put on an anti-scout again. Uh, up next, Black Widows from FGS. This one is so good. Make sure you quickly get a prisoner with the highest level possible. The power off a level 60 prisoner, guys. That attack boost that it gives you. And it you have to get it right away. Like super, super fast, right? So your guild should all be aware of this as a tip. 
as soon as somebody in your guild is being rallied and they are in fury, they're going to need to take it. Either make sure somebody has an alt that has hopefully a level 60 hero that they can quickly just one troop their hero, boom, attack the castle and their hero is now that person's prisoner. Or you could have somebody quickly drop tags, port next to the person, send their hero, basically a one troop march with their hero to the person that's being rallied and immediately, immediately guys, if you do this, port away, right? Because now you don't have your hero and the enemy knows that, right? So they're going to be looking for you. The good thing is they don't have really any way of tracking you unless they know or they were able to put a fake rally on you when you do that. So if you have somebody who's going to drop tags and immediately try to send you their hero, they need to port away pretty quickly to make sure that they're not in danger, especially if they're in that kind of soft, like under 200 million my perspective because what they could potentially do is as soon as that rally hits they might try to rally that person they might have some really big players in that guild try to solo them uh they could have their other guild you know whoever is an ally with them try to to rally them so you just don't want to make sure you want to make sure that you keep everybody safe right so a really good way is they're going to be able to give you a hell of an attack boost by that uh method but they need to be able to get away pretty quickly and keep an eye on world chat if their cords are being posted they need to keep moving so our next tip comes from Smithwix, who is in Rad, and it says, focus your heroes stationed in the castle to provide defense for the front line while also boosting your attack. So when you are about to be rallied, it is very important that you give a quick check of the heroes that you have stationed on your wall. And you're going to want to make sure, number one, that if you have any heroes that provide army level boosts, be it defense, attack, HP, that you have those heroes on your wall. And you want those boosts to be significant, right? So if we're talking, you know, 2%, that's probably not enough. You're, you want to make sure that those are pretty strong. Army level heroes are incredibly important and helpful. So you want to make sure that you have those. Uh, the second thing that you should ensure is if you tend to run an infantry type of formation or a cav heavy formation uh those are going to be the troops that you're putting out in front so you want to make sure that the heroes that you're putting on your wall are heroes that are providing direct boosts for those types of troops super important advice make sure that you follow it Our next tip comes from napslayer who is in brr uh, another of my guild mates make sure you specify what tier of troop you want T3 if you need a meat shield, T4 if you want to improve your overall defenses. Now we talked about the troop type, right? Now this is troop tier. And this uh, tip would basically pertain to any guild. So you don't necessarily have to have T4 and T3. If your guild is comprised primarily of T2 and T3, you can think of it the same way. Uh, but basically, whatever tier is lower in your castle those are going to be the troops that are going to be hit first when a rally hits so if you have let's say 100k t3 infantry and 100k t4 infantry your t3 infantry is going to engage with the enemy first and when about 50 percent of them start dying then your t4 is going to step up and start taking some of that damage so if you feel like you have enough t3 in your castle uh you don't necessarily have to make the request for more meat shield uh if you feel like you have more than enough t4 maybe you want more meat shield you can do that as well so be thoughtful about it think about what your quote-unquote meat shield looks like and make sure that it's big enough to be able to effectively handle the rally uh and if you feel like it is you can ask for that t4 reinforcement which is going to make your overall defenses uh much stronger okay this one comes from Painbot from BBB. Make sure you always use a boost at the moment you take a rally. So this is kind of the continuation of Azteca's uh, comment around, make sure you have anti-scout, then pop a boost when you're going to take it. Preferably attack boost. Guys, this is heavily debated. And I have asked a lot of people. I asked my guild. I've asked a considerable amount of folks. Attack boost versus defense boost. And I will tell you, I had a 50% defense boost on a rally that I took when I was about 120 million might. And I got wrecked. Like, I'm just going to say, I got wrecked. Like, my reinforcements all got wounded and I was fully reinforced. Uh, and they ended up filling my hospitals. So I was kind of like surprised. And I think everyone was kind of surprised. We we're like, wow, that was really bad. And when you looked at the gear of the person sending the rally, they were. 700 mil or so and had 
really kick-ass you know champ gear some of it was golden so i knew i wasn't going to do that great but i figured that that defense boost would be helpful now uh the reason that uh the prioritization scheme when you're thinking about army goes this way and you're gonna see you can you can research this stuff and this is out there kind of army hp is going to be the most important followed by army attack followed by army defense army defense is last so if you can improve the attack boost of your troops they are going to kill more of their troops and remember they are attacking you so you already have an advantage right so you're already asking for the right reinforcements hopefully you already have the right boost set up now you're going to give your your troops an attack boost on top of that it's going to help them take down the incoming rally that much faster so the recommendation is attack boost over defense boost guys i hope that this was helpful uh huge huge shout out to the 10 players they are amazing people awesome players great friends thank you so so much guys for all your tips uh, I think this, if you follow this closely, it's going to help you tremendously uh, when you're thinking about, you know, preparing for a rally. A lot of this stuff is just getting used to it and doing some of the pre-work to make sure that you have, you know, anti-scout on, that you have your boost kind of saved up so you're not having to purchase them when it's actually happening. Because you legitimately, you, you're going to have five minutes, right? Which if you think about it, five minutes is a long time. But when you see the counter the key the number one key to all of this is trying to stay calm and we've all been there right like once i've taken a few rallies at this point and it the the first feeling you get is always like oh god like the nervous you know tummy ache type of feeling but you have to just get in the mode where you're going to be problem solving and getting ready to be able to take this rally and making sure that you kick some major ass and that you're getting the right reinforcements and the key also is going to be not only staying calm but communicating with your guild. So make sure that you are telling them what you need, that you're telling them, I'm going to port here. I am here. Guys, port around me. Reinforce me with X, Y, and Z. You want to make sure you're over communicating because once you're being rallied, it you're in a leadership position at that point. And I've seen um, even in really well experienced guilds where you'll have someone who is being rallied for the first time and you can tell it's like dead silence. And we're like, hey, you're being rallied. And they're like, yeah. And you're like, what do you need? And they're like, I don't know. And that's, you don't want to be that guy, right? You want to make sure you, you've immediately moved, that you're like, all right, guys, I'm going to need X, Y, and Z. I'm trying to get a, a feel for like what they're sending me. Is it a real rally? Is it a fake rally? Um, you're going to want to make sure you're in the right. And this is just like basic prep work. Make sure your hospitals are empty. Make sure you have the right gear on. Make sure you are in battle gear. Guys, I don't want to see anybody in like monster hunting gear, like research gear. You know, that's what happens when they catch you offline. Make it a habit. And this is going to be costly, right? Because you might have to switch talents and it can cost, you know, the, the thousand gems or whatever, but it's worth it. It is worth it. If you if you are popping on a research, don't stay in research gear unless you are meticulous about shielding. If you think there is a danger that you're going to oversleep or not hear your alarm or whatever, rallies can, can cost you a lot and they'll send you a rally, they'll know you're offline, send you another one, then they'll start soloing you. I've seen this happen, it sucks. And it is very, very, very difficult for a guild to keep someone up if they are in the wrong spec or and especially if they're in the wrong gear and spec it's almost impossible you're going to just have so much um in terms of the overall guild's impact right everybody's starting to get you know troops in their castles everybody's going into fury reinforcing you so you want don't want to put people through that so those are just kind of like basic things but i hope this information was helpful super excited to be able to get it in front of you again a huge shout out to all the players and all the guilds that submitted information thank you so so much for watching uh until next time.